Okay, so this video is going to complement the lesson plan within week six Project Explore called Booked, Book Down Demo. And what these instructions are for is creating a book down document uh, of the exercises in lesson three. Then we're going to host that book down uh, using GitHub's GitHub pages. So I'm going to be following along pretty closely to the instructions outlined here. So as you go through the exercise um, with me here, I suggest having these instructions up. But the very first thing we're going to need to do is create a repo to store that book down in. So I'm going to go to my personal account here. I'm going to go to repositories. And then I'm going to hit new. To follow along with the directions, I'm going to call this repository book down underscore demo. Create repository. Once that's been created, I'm going to copy this URL. And then I'm going to open up our studio. To create this new repository, I'm going to create a new project version control, git, paste that link in, and then the directory name is going to be the same as the repository name. And I'm going to store this new repository in what I have is my oh my git folder, but basically where you store all your other GitHub repositories. For book downs, the very first step and very critical step is to create an R markdown called index. To create an R markdown, we can go to new R markdown, and instead of filling all this information out, we're going to just create an empty document. So uh, to follow along with our exercises listed in the week six repo here, what we're going to want to do is fill that, that R markdown with some YAML text. Um, with arguments that identify that the work within this repository is going to be knit as a book down. And then we're going to save it as index. This part's really important. It needs to be called index for the knitting to work properly. To give each chapter a name in our book down is to provide at the very top of the page just one hashtag and then the name of that section that we want for it. For here I'm just going to call it an introduction since this is kind of our header page is how I like to think of indexes. Now typically when you um, put a primary hashtag with text like this, the book down will automatically assume that it's a chapter. However, we don't really want this first R markdown to actually be a chapter. As I said, I, I kind of think of this as like pre-chapter stuff. So a way um, to make sure that R doesn't actually consider this a chapter is to use these curly brackets and then a dash within them. Basically saying, I want this header to exist within my document, but I don't want you to explicitly call this a chapter. And then like any other R markdown, after you've um, given it a name, you can just start adding whatever sort of introductory text you want. So, loop -loop 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 -loop. so I'm going to save that. Looks good. Now that we have our cover matter and introductory materials, let's add in some chapters or R markdowns. For the sake of this book down example, I'm going to populate this book with lessons that we've already done, specifically lesson three. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave our studio and just go into my file directory here. I'm going to find my week three APIs and iteration, and I'm just going to copy and paste all of these R markdowns into my book down demo folder. And as you see, I did that, they immediately populate here in the, um, the files console. 
So, we have three new chapters here, represented by each one of these three R markdowns. However, there's going to need to be a bit of tweaking we need to do to them, since we're just copying and pasting a previous, you know, workflow in. One of those being that no chapters should have this YAML header included on them. The other thing is that we need to give them that chapter name. Here I'm just going to call it APIs and iterations. The other thing to keep in mind is that our markdowns that go into bookdowns can only have one chapter name, which is that primary header. So because we created this lesson plan without thinking it would become a book down, I've got a couple extra primary headers. We don't want that. R will get really angry and not understand why there's two chapters within one chapter. So I'm just going to go through each of these R markdowns, find those headers, and just add a hashtag to them. Okay, that one looks good. Just gonna do the exact same thing with each of my R markdowns, give it a chapter name. And then verify that there are no more single hashtag headers. Great, that one looks good. So as I'm going through each one of these R markdowns, I found something else that the book down workflow or the book down process to knit is not going to like. And that is that we have some code chunks called the same thing set up across each R markdown. So if you remember from a few lessons ago, Caitlin talked about that for in any given R markdown, you can't have the same uh, name given to every code chunk. This wasn't a problem previously because each one of these three R markdowns were in fact individual R markdowns. But the way bookdowns are made is that each of these R markdowns get merged into one essentially. And so during that process of merging, you end up with three code chunks of the same name from each of these, right? So we're going to just need to get rid of those or rename them. I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, naming code chunks can be really helpful in some cases, but when making book downs, not so much. So we're just going to get rid of them. And um, from my personal experience, I recommend not naming them. Or if you do, just being very clear um, and mindful of the fact that you can't have any uh, code chunks named the same thing. But with that, we have all three of our chapters ready to go. You may be finding yourself wondering, how does R Markdown know the order in which these chapters are going to go? Well, by default, Bookdown will place them alphanumerically. So in this instance, the way they were written originally actually is going to work out, right? Because O1 is going to go first, O2, O3, etc. So our last thing that we're going to need to do here is add an additional YAML file that gives our book down some tailored settings. One of those that's really important in this example in particular is the fact that we know we want to host this book down on GitHub. Well, GitHub has a very particular way um, of identifying and pulling out the, uh, the product within a repository to post online, and that's through a folder called docs. So to create additional settings within our workflow, we're going to create this, what I said, is um, it's a, called bookdown.yaml. 
and we're going to go back to the R mark down in our lesson plan and we're going to copy and paste this information into the YAML file. So this book down YAML, as I said, provides additional information um, or customization to our book down. The list goes on and on as far as what arg arguments you can actually add to this book down YAML. However, the ones that I've got here and the ones that are, at least to me, the ones that are the most important is this chapter name, which is a subheader under the language and user interface. This provides you an opportunity if you want um, to add additional text to each one of your chapter names. So right now, for example, in our first chapter, it's called APIs and Iterations. We could add chapter one, APIs and Iterations, um, instead of what will ultimately come if we left it blank, it would just be one APIs and Iterations. So you can fill that out with whatever you want. You could also leave it blank, really up to you. So then the last one, and really the most important one in our case, is this output dir argument. What this is doing is essentially calling explicitly out that we want the final book down product to be located within a folder called docs. So with that, I'm going to save it. And looking at the files within our repository here, we have everything we need to be able to actually make it. So if you haven't done so already um, in your console, let's go ahead and install the package book down. I think I have that somewhere in here. So first let's ex install it so that we now have the functions loaded within our R. Uh, to actually knit or render the book down. And next we're going to actually do it. So I think it's called render book. So what this is doing is basically it's going to pull and merge all of our R markdown files into one and then do its magic to make it a book down. We know it worked because it says the output was created. Sure enough, it's located within our docs folder, which is some was an argument that we put within our book down YAML. To view the document itself, you can go into the docs file, and as it's listed here, index.html, the full document will actually be housed within this single HTML file. And look at that, we got it. Looks good. Um, Bookdowns are great, so you know from one chapter you're able to scroll down, and then if you want to move into the next chapter, you have the option of going left right through the chapters. You've got this nice um, table of contents that you can actually um, hide by clicking that button or, or keeping it. You can search for words. Um, you have some formatting options as far as uh, text size, text font, and then um, overall formatting of the background and, and such. So it's, it's pretty handy. So as it is right now, you could start sharing that index.html file out, but wouldn't it be better to host it on a website and just send the link to whoever it is you want to have see it? So that's where we're going. First step to do that is to save, commit, and push all of this newly acquired book down stuff back onto GitHub. So I'm going to do it with uh, the terminal, but you can do it however. Um... Hmm. I don't know why it doesn't like that, so I'm just going to do it through here. Weird. GitHub can be kind of weird sometimes. Okay, let's see if that actually worked. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't because I've never seen that error before. 
So I'm going to refresh this page. Ah, and sure enough, it, it did work. So now in my personal GitHub here, we've got all of those um, RMDs we created, as well as that final book down document in here. So the next thing we're going to do is create a GitHub page for this so that we can actually create a URL um, where that we can send out for people um, online. So we go to our settings, pages. Here we're going to select the main, meaning we want to use our, our repo. And then we want to direct GitHub to find that index file where we located it, which is in our docs folder. And then we're going to save. Though you don't see anything happening right now, what is happening is that GitHub is currently working on actually putting that website together for us. A way to check the status of that build um, is at the Actions tab. What you see here is this page's build and deployment is in progress. And so that thing will keep circling and changing colors. And we know that the website is actually up and live when it becomes a green check, which takes about a minute or two. So we'll just wait. Awesome, got that green arrow. So there's a bunch of different ways to actually get the URL or the link up, but the, the one I typically use is just by going to the book down demo or the repo that you know it created the website. And what you'll see at the bottom right corner now is this thing called environments. And then you can see this view deployment. And what that's gonna do is take us to the link the URL that now hosts our book down.